Hi there. I am Alain Chenet, the secretary of the Toronto SIGGRAPH chapter, and I'd like to welcome you all to this talk. I'd like to introduce Nick Oberlin, who is our speaker today. He is a member of the SIGGRAPH Student Volunteer Steering Committee and is the industry lead there, where he's responsible for coordinating with all of our industry partners and making sure that we have really interesting talks for our student volunteers. Tonight, Nick will be presenting the student volunteer program, and we will invite you all to go and pose your questions in the comments area. So please pose the questions, and once Nick has finished his talk, we'll go into a Q&A session where he, where he will address your questions. Take it away, Nick. All right, hello and welcome everybody to this live stream for the uh, Student Volunteer Program for SIGGRAPH 2021. Um, I will be going through this slide deck and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. So the very first thing it's gonna do is it is gonna play a quick video. It's kind of a trailer for the conference um, for this year. At SIGGRAPH 2020, more than 10,000 individuals from 95 countries gathered virtually to experience over 350 hours of content presented by more than 1,600 contributors. What resulted was pure SIGGRAPH. Robotic advances use subtractive fabrication techniques to carve foam and similar materials like an artist. Modeling and predictive computation creates a more robust and accurate time stepping of nonlinear elastodynamics. New investigation into damage simulation can change the landscape of video and game effects, as well as surgical training. Novel healthcare technologies point toward new ways to transform and enhance lives. Research will help users to create reprogrammable multicolor textures made from a single material. AI driven technology pushes the capabilities of crowd simulation. Award winning animation showcases the latest in computer graphics. Real time and gaming technology advancements transform interactive storytelling techniques and explore new applications of the technology. Evocative digital artwork uses machine learning to create visceral experiences. Now is the time to share your research, your innovations, and your creative inspiration. SIGGRAPH is your community, and we hope you'll share your work with SIGGRAPH 2021. All right, so those of you that don't know, SIGGRAPH uh, 2021 is the 48th year of the conference. Uh, so in two years, we'll be at the 50th, which will be uh, pretty fun. And a uh, little history. So in 2019, uh, when it was still in person, uh, this was kind of a little bit of what the conference would have looked like. Uh, so on the top left, we have the uh, uh, booth for the following year. So that was advertising for SIGGRAPH 2020. Um, on the top right, we have kind of what the big talk halls would look like. So that'd be like your computer animation festival, real time live, um, things of that nature. Uh, bottom middle, uh, it's called the Geek Bar. It was actually introduced, in, I believe in 2018 and then kind of perfected in 2019, uh, where people could sit down and kind of see on different monitors what was going on, the talks that were being held all throughout the conference. Um, that way you didn't have to go, you know, sit in a room for all of them. There were some you could view in the big kind of Geek Bar lobby area. Bottom right, we have the art gallery. Uh, that was a really uh, fun year. We had a, a really popular futurist artist, uh, like 22, 26 prints, something like that. They were really, really impressive to see in person. Uh, bottom left, uh, just some attendee getting to uh, experience an HTC Vive. Most likely, if I had to guess, it'd be in emerging technologies. They were trying something new there. And then um, top middle, most likely is going to be in the studio, which is now called SIGGRAPH Labs, where uh, attendees can go and get like hands-on and create stuff, build stuff, in this case, draw things. Um, and then SIGGRAPH 2020, uh, as you all know, uh, went virtual. And so there wasn't that in-person component. So SIGGRAPH 2021 also being virtual is going to more closely resemble SIGGRAPH 2020, but that doesn't mean that the content is you know, any, any less. There's still gonna be a lot to do and a lot for uh, attendees and student volunteers to uh, engage with. So in the middle top here, we have uh, Marco Tempest, who was the keynote speaker last year. Uh, 
great presentation. Bottom left, kind of a, a sampling of, you know, a talk that was given. ILM did a production session there, um, really well attended. And then the rest of them, the rest of these screens are just kind of uh, various uh, screen caps of what the virtual conference looked like and what you can kind of expect uh, to see. So ACM, for those of you who don't know, ACM SIRGRAPH is a special interest group uh, within the greater ACM organization. Um, and then SIRGRAPH 2021 is the premier conference for computer graphics and interactive techniques worldwide. Uh, when does it take place? Summer 2021 and where? obviously worldwide virtual format. So it doesn't matter where you are, but you can uh, help engage and participate in the conference itself. Um, so student volunteers, uh, the person in charge of the program this year, uh, my boss, Alex Bryant, uh, he's the program chair. Um, so this will be his ninth overall SIGGRAPH conference. Um, he has been around for quite a while. And uh, if you want to read, he actually tells us to, to not spend too much time on this slide of his because he has a, he has his own bio on the website. So if you want to learn more about Alex, you can go to the student volunteer page and, and find all that information there. Um, underneath Alex is the student volunteer subcommittee. This is where my role is. Oh, we should update that. So we actually do have a technical adjunct uh, who has been selected and I believe has been announced. Uh, we just need to get his, his photo on here. Um, so from left to right, we have um, Yaliz, who is the community manager. So she oversees all of our social media pages um, and all of our like community engagement, Discord, and uh, Gather Town, um, if, it, if it happens. And then we have Melina, who is the communications manager. So if you guys email the SV dash s2021 at sirgraph.org. She's most likely going to be the one that replies to you. Uh, Wellington is the technical lead. He handles the uh, application portal. So if you have a problem with your application or you can't get something in that to work, he'd be the person you'd want to contact. Uh, as Alon said, I am the industry and outreach lead. So most of my work is uh, as a liaison between the SV program and um, large companies in the industry or small companies that we are trying to uh, utilize for the SP program. And then Diana is the program manager, uh, which has its own set of roles, but also is the person who is the chair for next year. So she'll be the 2022 um, student volunteer chair. Uh, the overall conference chair this year is Paul Jeremiah's Villa. Um, he is a wonderful individual. He's a great person to, to get to know and have a conversation with. Um, I got to spend some time with him uh, in 2018 and again in 2019, no, 2017 and 2018. Um, and he's always a, a great guy to, to get to know. So uh, this was kind of his uh, pitch for SIGGRAPH 2021, or his vision, I should say. Uh, so this year in our virtual environment, we aim to create a high quality experience that will feature breakthroughs in research and technology, speakers who will inspire and push the field forward, and a community that will collaborate and enjoy all that has been achieved and what is now possible. We invite you to contribute your latest innovation to this experience and to celebrate advancements in computer graphics, digital art, animation, visual effects, machine learning, artificial intelligence, immersive and mixed realities, scientific visual visualization, and more. So if you've never been to SIGGRAPH and you've never looked at the website, um, this is kind of what there is to offer, right? This is what's at the conference um, amongst other things. So on the right uh, is how they have it broken out by interest areas. So arts and design, gaming and interactive, new technologies, production animation, research and education. So when you go to the website, you can actually sort by interest areas just to kind of give you a starting point um, and then Underneath each of those interest areas, there will be content that corresponds to the various programs and events. So you might have a, um, a course on new technologies or a panel on arts and design or a talk on gaming interactive. Um, so the programs and events, as you can see, are, are quite lengthy. There's quite a few of them. Um, I am an artist myself, and so I tend to gravitate towards and attend the art-based um, venues. Uh, art gallery is really uh, near and dear to me. I, I got to see a bunch of really cool sculptures uh, in my early years in 2012 and 2013 uh, that kind of helped impact and push my art forward when I was a student volunteer. Uh, I really enjoy art papers. Uh, I've been on the jury before, so uh, reading through all those is, is a blast. Uh, labs is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, that used to be called SIGGRAPH Studio, which I served on the subcommittee for for many years and um, got to chair in 2018. So that's one of my favorite venues that I always like to check out. Um, and then another really uh, 
another one that I really enjoy is VR theater. So uh, I have started doing some work in VR. So that's one that I like to go check out. And VR theater used to be really tough to get a ticket to because you would have to actually get a physical ticket. And there's only like 30 to 40 to 50 tickets available for the entire week. Um, but this year, uh, it's all going to be online. And so as long as you have a VR headset, you should be able to attend VR theater from my understanding. Um, so that would be really fun for uh, everybody that would like to attend it. So where do you guys fit in? What are we looking for? So SIGGRAPH as a whole is pretty encompassing. So if you see anything on this screen that pertains to you or like you're even adjacent to, uh, we, we've got a spot for you. There's, there's some kind of content there that you will find at SIGGRAPH. I have met an extremely wide range of uh, talents and careers at SIGGRAPH and it always amazes me the kind of uh, wide audience that the conference pulls in. Uh, you, you as a student volunteer specifically. So we're looking for somebody who is passionate about the industry, uh, regardless of where you fit in on that previous slide. If you're passionate about your specific industry, um, then you'll find somebody else at SIGGRAPH that is also has that same level of passion, right? Um, are you interested in new technologies and innovation? That's, that's what SIGGRAPH is about. I've, I've been at the conference, I think, I think I've been to 14 of them now total between North America and Asia. Um, and there's always something new going on at the conference, right? They're always unveiling, you know, uh, NVIDIA, I think it was NVIDIA, unveiled a new graphics card a few years ago. And that was really cool to, 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 to see uh, happen during the week, right? Um, and then networking, uh, you'll always meet new people and you'll always make new friends from around the world. I still have friends from 2012, uh, which was their first year that I attended, uh, that I still talk to on a regular basis. Uh, we do ask that you're a team player, you know, so you're going to get to know a lot of people. You're going to most likely be working in pairs or more. And so you do need to be able to, to work with other individuals. Um, and then are you up for an amazingly awesome week long adventure? So it is it is a week uh, of conference and you'll be doing various things throughout that week. Um, what did the duties include? So this has obviously changed from when it was in person to now being virtual. Um, and the phrase student volunteer is interchangeable with SB. So if you hear me say SB, that's that's what I'm referring to. Uh, so the 2021 duties are going to include video editing for conference programs. So uh, sometimes video will come in beforehand and it'll be needs to be like kind of watched through and spliced together and edited for um, some of the pre-recorded stuff. And so SBs that have those skills um, are actually would be in high demand this year so that we can uh, have you guys work together on splicing that stuff. Uh, help with closed captioning videos. And so uh, there is a, a big push this year to, to have as much closed captioning as possible. So we'll need, you know, ears and, and typing so that people can, can get through that. Um, curate discussions with attendees. So during the conference itself, the week of, um, they'll, depending on how it goes this year, it's still undecided. So last year there was a, 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 a portal called Hub, and then Hub would link to a Zoom, private Zoom channel. And there was chats going on in both of them sometimes. And so student volunteers would help with um, both monitoring and kind of curating, guiding the discussion um, in both aspects. And so uh, we need SBs that are, are, are in those chat rooms and able to help uh, attendees if they have questions, make sure any questions get to the speakers um, and things like that. And then lastly, reviewing video content. So everything that gets put up on the conference has to be uh, for pre-recorded has to be pre-watched and scanned to make sure that um, there's no technical errors with it, make sure audio doesn't drop out, um, stuff like that. And so we'll need student volunteers uh, to do that. One cool perk about that is you might actually end up w watching a talk that you wanted to see before the conference even starts. So then you don't have to take the time to attend it. You can attend another one that might be happening at the same time. So what's in it for you? What are the perks? Um, in exchange for approximately 20 virtual hours, so the, the previous slide, 20 hours of, of work along those lines, uh, all SVs will receive complimentary SIGGRAPH 2021 ultimate registration. So that is the highest tier of registration uh, that gets you into all the conference content. Um, and so you can, you'll can you have unlimited access to everything. One cool thing about it being virtual is uh, all of the content will be available for two weeks after the end of the show. So if there's something that you missed, uh, you will still have time to go. Your registration will let you go watch it even after the show is over. Um, next one's a big one. So S3 stands for SIGGRAPH Student Services. Uh, they are not technically part of the SB program. They are under the organization. Um, but they work alongside the SB program. The student volunteer program is for the conference specifically. S3 is actually a year-round 
thing and they offer services to students all year round. So you get uh, during the week of the conference, though, we offer the S3 resume, portfolio and real review sessions. So the S3 team will uh, set up kind of a calendar of uh, slots and they will send an email out to all the SVs. They'll send an email out to all of the SVs that says, you know, take a look at this um, schedule, see if there's anybody you want to meet with. And it'll be uh, an individual from the industry that says, hey, I'm an animator. I got 20 minutes at this time on this day. And if you're a student volunteer, you can reserve that slot and that animator will sit down and look at your resume, your portfolio and your reel and give you, you know, feedback on, on what they think uh, would help you uh, get into the industry or whatever your goal is. Um, Cool thing is it's not just animators, it's pretty much everything across the field. You know, the, I've seen technical directors, I've seen layout artists, I've seen illustrators, um, you know, everything along those lines. I've seen people reviewing like, you know, blocks of code. So regardless of what your role or job, um, student status in the industry is, uh, most likely S3 will have somebody that can take a look at your uh, resume portfolio and reel and give you some feedback on that to help you down the line. Uh, third one, really close to my heart, student volunteer special sessions. So as the industry lead, I reach out to you know the big companies or the small companies, uh, anybody in the industry, and ask them to give you know specific talks. Now these talks are uh, things that only the vol student volunteers get to go to. Regular standard attendees don't get to attend them, um, but it's a, a perk of being an SB. So my first year in 2012, I got to attend a talk by. Um, a creative director at uh, Blur Studios. And so that was really cool. And I got to uh, watch a uh, attend a talk from a gentleman from Lightwave, uh, the software. Um, and I actually won a copy of the Lightwave software that year and got to take it home with me. So that's my job is reaching out to all those and creating like kind of like a mini conference within the conference that only the student volunteers get to attend. Um, and so that's kind of one of my goals this year is to make that really, really strong. Uh, next one, you get to network with industry professionals uh, and international student peers. So as a, a SV, you will be, you know, behind the scenes a little bit. It's a little different when it's virtual. When it's in person, you're literally like backstage a lot. Um, when it's virtual, you'll most likely be in the chat rooms a little early to make sure that tech is all working, microphones and audio or video are working. Um, and you'll have, you know, a little bit of time before and possibly after to to talk to the, the speaker that are giving those, those talks, right? So you might get a meet you know, somebody that you've read in your research and they're giving a talk on something that's important to you and you get to have a couple minutes, you know, alone with them. And then international student peers, there's people from all, I have friends from every continent except Antarctica, right, um, through SIGGRAPH. One year complimentary SB membership. So what that gets you is a um, uh, ACM membership and a SIGGRAPH membership. And one really cool thing with that is the digital library. So on the ACM website is, uh, a digital library of all of the like published papers through ACM and your SB membership gets you access to that. Um, and so it's, it's a really, really big resource um, that, you know, 20 hours of, of volunteering gets you access to all year round. Uh, and then other surprises yet to be announced. I'm not actually even privy to that. That's uh, something that Alex knows about and he's got in the works and uh, I'm excited to see what he has coming down the line for, for all the SBs. So sounds awesome, right? What do you have to be to be eligible? So you have to be over 18 years old uh, on or before April 26th, 2021. Uh, you have to be enrolled as a student with a minimum of six credit hours at an accredited university for at least one semester between summer of 2020 and spring of 2021. Uh, you have to fully complete the student volunteer application. And that one is really important. Uh, I've seen a lot, I've seen a fair amount of people that uh, don't fill out one of the essays. They forget to fill out one of them, right? And that, that will count against you or they, fill them all out, but then they forget to hit submit. And then the next day we get an email asking if they can still apply. So make sure you fully complete the student voluntary application and, and remember to hit submit. Uh, you do have to provide appropriate documentation of your credit hours from your accredited institution. Um, on the website, there's a list of what we accept, but the short list is kind of like a student, a transcript, um, or even uh, there was one year that I transferred schools and I hadn't gotten a student ID or a transcript at that school yet. And the last time I attended school was too long ago to make me eligible. So I just went to the registrar and they just typed up a letter on like formal letterhead saying that I was attending, I was eligible, uh, and that was accepted as, you know, appropriate documentation. So if you have any questions on that, um, you know, if you're in a situation like that, please feel free to, to email us uh, and uh, we can get that sorted out. And then you do need to commit to be available from May 2021 through August 5th of 2021. 
for the for the SV program. Uh, and then this is new for 2021. Uh, normally, we have a very strict eligibility cutoff window. Um, but due to last year going virtual and, and some of the stuff changing, uh, if you applied for the SV program last year, um, you are still eligible to apply for 2021 when you use the same email. So we have our system set up to recognize emails from last year. So if you apply to this year uh, and you use the same email, it should let you, you know, apply even if your eligibility technically ended. Um, if you have issues with that, uh, please feel free to email us and we can get that manually sorted out. We've had a few people that switched emails or they were no longer able to access their old one and we were still able to get them into the system. Um, and then those of you that have been in SV before, uh, you know that the next kind of step up in the ladder is a team leader. So if you have at least one year of SV experience, you can apply to be a team leader. Uh, the applications are closed for this year, but it's always something to think about for next year and, and, and moving forward. Uh, they take on a little bit more responsibility and they are uh, in charge of managing SVs. They work directly with the SVSC and the uh, student volunteer chair, and they are assigned like a specific venue. So a team leader will be in charge of like all of the exhibition hall. And so they have to take care of all of the student volunteers in the exhibition hall, right? Um, it's, it's a lot more intense. Uh, it's about 60 hours prior and during the week of SIGRAP. Uh, the team leaders also are the ones that read and grade and review all of the student volunteer applications. So that's a lot of, of time commitment up front. Um, but you get, uh, there's a lot of rewards involved with that, especially if you want to participate in the greater um, SIGGRAPH um, or AC, ACM organization. So I was a team leader in SIGGRAPH Asia from 2014 to 2017. Um, and so I got to meet a lot of people both in the industry and in the conference. Um, and that helped me, you know, work my way through the, the kind of the, the ladder of volunteer roles. Um, and that's what allowed me to, to be a studio chair in 2018, which was uh, uh, extremely rewarding. So if you have any questions about uh, team leader roles, uh, feel free to email uh, sb s 2021 at seagraph.org. Um, and just again, they are closed this year, but uh, something to keep in mind for next year. So important dates. Um, the student volunteer applications are due March 5th, 2020. So there's uh, you know just about two weeks left. Um, and that, that timestamp is really important. So make sure you get it in before that uh, 10 o'clock UTC time. So that's I want to say that's 4 p.m. Mountain Time, which is where I'm located, um, but my time conversion might be off. Um, and then the conference dates, um, they are still uh, still finalizing that. So when they made the decision to go virtual, uh, the, the dates kind of got changed. So all we know is that the pre-conference shift for the student volunteer program will be May to June 2021. The orientation will be May 2021 and or July 31st, 2021. And then the virtual conference will be sometime in August 2021. So keep an eye on the social media pages for the conference and the website for the conference. And as soon as those dates are, are solidified, they'll be, they'll be posted. Uh, one of the last things, if you're a, a big Anthem fan, um, check all of our social media channels. We do have some pinned posts that will tell you how to win a pos uh, win a signed poster. Uh, there's a couple of requirements that you have to do. And, and I know you, Liz, has some other um, contests coming up on the social media channels. So keep an eye on those. And yeah, so with that, uh, questions? There's a social media, apply. Yeah, so any questions? Uh, I can take those now. Feel free to... Uh, Post them in the comments. Let's see. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you here. So let me get the first one up as I go through, which was asking why do we have to commit from May to August? Hmm. Yeah, so really good question. Um, so when I talked about the, the duties slide, there was like um, editing video and also pre watching video. And so some of that will start. Um, well before you know the conference actually takes place because it's just going to take a long time to get through all that video. Um, the 20 hours is going to be like your total. So between May, whenever we start, and the end of the conference, you'll only work about 20 hours. But we don't necessarily know when that content will be delivered to us and then when we have to pass it on to you, right? So the student volunteers exist to, to serve the greater conference at a whole. And so the various uh, conference chairs reach out to us and say, hey, I need SVs to help me with this. And then if it's a role that Alex thinks we can help with, um, we you know, delegate that down to the team leaders and then down to the SVs. And so um, you just you kind of have to be on call between May 
and August, which is the conference, right? So it's 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 kind of an open-ended time frame. You'll have the dates required for like orientation or any one-on-one -on -one meetings and stuff like that. You'll have those well in advance. Um, we don't expect you just to like you know drop the hat, come take care of things. Um, but in general, those will be your pre-conference work shift timeline, and then August is you know the week of the conference where you'll have a lot more shifts. Okay, thanks for that, Nick. Uh, another question that came up is. You were talking about the uh, VR uh, presentation, and you said that people will be able to participate with their own VR headsets. Do you know what type of VR headsets will be supported? I don't. Uh, so I don't okay. know. I don't know how much information is is out there. I have heard. Um, I know last year there were some issues with VR theater, um, mm -hmm. with how that worked, um, but I have heard in passing this year that they're hoping to make it so that anybody that has the proper registration level and a VR headset. Um, we'll be able to access the VR theater, um, you know, through the conference website. So keep your eyes open on, let's see, if you go to Cigarette 2021, they might actually have this information on the website. I've been so wrapped up in student volunteer stuff, I haven't had a chance to look at. Yeah, so they're actually still, uh, the submissions are still open for the VR theater. So I'm guessing okay. they have all of the viewing side of that sorted out yet. So I would just keep, a, keep an eye on the website and, and it'll kind of let you know. Okay, I'll be posting the links to the website in the comments uh, later so that people know where to go. Okay, we have one more question concerning the 20 hours. I wanted to know, for, are the 20 hours negotiable? Uh, so, I want to explain how that works. Yeah, so in regards to the quantity, so the, the actual number of 20, um, it's, it's anywhere from like slightly less than 20 to slightly over 20. That part's not really negotiable. Um, it's, it's part of your commitment. You know, you have to work around 20 hours. Uh, some, you know, sometimes depending on how shifts work out, you might work 18 or 19, you might work 21 or 22, but on average, student volunteers will be around 20 hours. In terms of the content, um, slightly negotiable, if you want to consider it that. Uh, sometimes we'll put out, as the SVS, SVSC, we'll send an email out to all of the SVs and say, hey, I have this shift. It requires this. Uh, we need people that have this skill set. And everybody that gets back to us will pick from that group and they'll get those shifts. Um, that's not always available. That's not always the case. Um, but we do try to do our best to assign shifts to those that want those shifts, right? Um, and so that will be uh, kind of just dependent on what, like I mentioned before, we serve the conference. So it kind of depends on the shifts that are, are sent to us that the conference says they need. And we try to divide those up as evenly and fairly as we as we can. Um, but we don't send out like a big roll call and let you guys arrange your schedule. We have to, to remain as efficient as possible. I think the question may have had to do with when during the periods of May through August, they might be called upon. It's um, you know, how I'm interpreting the question and again. They, you know, uh, uh, if uh, Emma Robertson might want to go and post yet another question to, to see if we've actually answered her concerns, but my guess is she may have something scheduled for, you know, a trip someplace, assuming that COVID is over by that time in August and may not be available for the full month of August. Um, so in that regard, um, I can't really comment too much because we don't have the schedule that far out in advance but if mm -hmm. i had to guess it would be like we'll assign you you know x amount of videos that you need to pre-watch and they need to be watched by like this date um it's it's not going to be where like hey you have 10 hours of video that you need to pre-watch and we need it tomorrow um so the timeline i wouldn't say is negotiable as much as it is um you know loose with respective deadlines okay uh, we have another question from Irfan Quasi. Let me bring it up here. Okay, so since we have to be on call, what time zone is the you know will conference follow? So the the conference is going to most likely follow um, one of the North American you know timeline time zones. So it's supposed to be held in Los Angeles this year. Uh, I don't know if the official time zone is going to be Pacific time um, or uh, mid, um, Mountain or Central or Eastern. But if I had to guess, it will be a um, one of the North American time zones. And then with the during the week of the conference, that would be the biggest concern is that you would be available you know, during those time zones because that's when the talks are held. Um, in terms of um, shifts that you do beforehand, watching video, editing, stuff like that, uh, as long as you get it done during the deadline, the, the time zone that you do that sort of stuff in it shouldn't particularly matter. 
Okay, you might want to address how much of the work would be uh, during the pre-conference work. Um, and unfortunately, okay. that's something we don't really know yet. Uh, so okay. So a lot of that's going to come down to when the um, conference or the the venue chairs get us their final like hour requests, um, and then we can kind of divide up and say we need this many pre-conference, we need, need this many you know during the conference, um, and things like that. Uh, to answer Emma's question about editing videos, uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, so that would be we would we would be looking for people that already have access to that software. Um, and, and are able to, you know, already kind of have that experience. And you're going way too fast for me, Nick. I didn't have time to put that this question up before. Uh, and if you don't have that software or that experience, we, we wouldn't assign you those shifts, right? We're not going to say, hey, we need you to edit, you know, these videos, figure it out, right? So we would be looking for people that have that experience. And if you don't and you're, you're still in the program, you'd be assigned shifts that didn't require that skill. Yeah, one other question that comes up a lot during these talks that we give is what type of uh, computer graphics background are you expected to have? Are you expected to be a student who is actively studying computer graphics as your major in right. college? Right. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> so uh, I, my first year in 2012, I was a senior and my program, I was a sculpture major. Um, and I had an interest in animation and I found the conference and I was like, oh, this looks really cool. Uh, I should go check it out. And I applied, I got into the program and I've been a part of it for the last eight years. Right. So, um, as long as you have an interest in computer graphics in some greater, larger sense, um, you'll, you'll find joy out of it. I've met a couple like just strictly audio engineers at the, at the conference. They have very little to do with computer graphics, right. It's directly, but they work with and around people that that have that interest. And so um, there's, there's a very, very wide range of people at the conference. Okay, next question that we've got from Sakira is what, uh, what sort of video editing programs do you expect us to use? Um, so I believe that's pretty open-ended. Um, I wasn't a part of the program last year when they first did the editing, but from my understanding, uh, we'd be giving you, we'd be you know sending you video at a certain, um, you know, in, uh, encryption and a certain codec. And as long as you can edit it in that same resolution and in that same audio codec and send it back to us, um, that'd be fine. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, I, I personally edit in Premiere and Resolve and either of those would be okay. DaVinci Resolve is, is free if, if you're trying to, you know, get into video editing. Um, so as long as you can take the videos that we send you and they're not gonna be like some obscure codec, um, as long as you can watch them, edit them, put them together, um, and then send, this, send them back to us in that same format. That would be more than adequate. So okay, so here, the essential question is, how yeah. do you apply? Yeah, so if uh, I'll be sharing a, um, a marketing kit with Alon after this talk, and um, I don't know if he has a way to get that to everybody, but uh, let's do this real quick. So I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen, uh, sb.sigraph.org, and then I'm going to reshare my screen. So if you guys go to sv.sigraph.org, which should be on the screen now. Um, um, okay, I'm, we're not sharing the screen anymore. Let me bring it up for you, just yep. a second. Of Here we go. So that's okay. sv.sigraph. S I G G R A P H dot org. Um, and you can see at the top there, there's a big start application button. That is where right. you uh, get going, right? So, uh, Nick, can you copy and paste the URL directly into the comments? That way everybody will have it. Uh, I actually can. It doesn't let me comment. I can only. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, I sorry. will go and do that. So, I'm sorry. What did you say? So, SV? SV dot SIGGRAPH dot org. Okay, let me post that in there. I didn't realize you couldn't comment from there. Yeah, I tried to do that earlier, actually, and for some reason it won't let me comment. So. There we go. So the URL is in the comments section. Go for it. Oh, sorry, I only put it on YouTube. Let me put it on uh, like, Facebook as well. Looks like a lot of the attendees are, are Facebook. I see you've been node, or are YouTube. Yep. I see you've nodes on Facebook watching. Alex is on YouTube. Yep. So, yeah. There we go. 
Okay, so the URL is up there. Okay, so different months posting your comment up here just to go and see. So if I'm saying you don't like me, I find it really interesting, I'm just a software engineer student outside the USA. We, many of our volunteers come from outside of the USA. So I don't live in the US, by the way. I'm just north of the border in Canada. But we have uh, student volunteers coming from quite a few countries. It's, oh God, I would guess that any specific year, we have probably have about 40 or 50 countries represented amongst our student volunteers. We make a huge effort to attract uh, volunteers from all over the world. So don't feel that if you're not based in the US, that you can't attend, especially being virtual, you won't have to worry about getting a visa. Right, yeah, and um, I mean, between SIGGRAF, um, what I call SIGGRAF North America and SIGGRAF Asia, we, we have student volunteers from so many countries. Like I've, I've met people from every, every continent possible. I mean, that's a very small number actually, uh, from, from so many countries between the two conferences. So don't let that stop you. I mean, being a hobbyist graphics programmer modeler, the year that it's virtual, you know, this year is the perfect year to get started. You don't have to pay for a plane ticket. You don't have to pay for, you know, lodging or anything like that. It'd be the perfect year to, to kind of get introduced to the conference. So. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Let's give it a little bit more just in case. Now we've covered all the questions that have come up so far. And I think you did a really, really good job, Nick, of presenting this and giving an overview of what the student volunteer program is all about. So for all of you who are current students and would like to participate, please head over to sv.sigraph.org. The link is in the comments. Send in your application, and we would love to count you amongst us for this year's virtual conference. And with that, say goodbye. And thank you, Nick. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.